Hey there, this is Ike Hoffman with Tactica Real Estate Solutions, and today we're going to be building a simple one-page multifamily pro forma Excel template from scratch. It's meant to serve as a quick and simple evaluation tool when you're doing your initial due diligence on a prospective investment opportunity. This is a tool that I offer to site visitors for free. You can get it from the link below right from the Tactica website. I recommend going there now downloading it on your computer, and you can use it as a reference point as you complete the tutorial. I'll also be adding some additional features to the version I'm creating today. I'd recommend that you stick around to the end of the video to learn what those additional inputs are. If you've been enjoying Tactica's video content, I'd really appreciate if you gave the video a like, subscribed, and allowed us to notify you when we're releasing new content. Let's go build a model. Before we start building our one-page analysis tool, let's set up a theoretical investment with actual numbers. In my experience, it's much easier to build a tool when you have numbers to work with. So let's say we, we received an email from a broker and there's an apartment complex for sale and pricing guidance is $25 million. There's 200 rentable units and those units consist of 175,000 square feet. We have a debt quote. We got quoted at 65% loan to value, an interest rate of 5.75%, 25-year amortization, and a 1% loan cost. We also have some historical operations information. The current rent at the property, the current average rent, I should say, is $1,100. The current vacancy is 6%, and the 2022 NOI was a hair north of 1.3 million. Just looking through some pictures, making some rough estimates, we think there's going to need to be about $310,000 of capital needs. And then we pulled property tax information as well from the county website. The current assessment is $23,567,000 and the current property taxes payable are $465,000. We'll be referencing these terms repeatedly as we build out the model. In this section, we're gonna input the address, city, state, zip code, units and rentable square footage. If you've ever used a Tactica analysis tool, you know that all input cells are brown text cells, meaning it's up to you to enter in an assumption or a label and black text cells are outputs, meaning they should not be amended unless you're incredibly comfortable with the tool and you know what you're doing. So in this section, we'll just make up an address 111 First Street We'll say in, in St. Paul, Minnesota, then it's 200 units. That was in the initial data drop that we looked at before we began building. And the rentable square footage was 175,000. So I'm going to format this slightly. These would all be brown tech cells. I like when there's a comma, so it's easier to read. And then I'm going to highlight the section header with black fill, make the text white, just a few other formatting tweaks. All right, so we have our general property information. Now part two is the capital stack. So I'm gonna copy and paste the section header call a capital stack. And in this section, the first thing we need to enter in is the price. We also wanna know that on a per unit basis, the price per unit and the per square foot. And if you recall, the pricing guidance was 25 million. I'm going to format this cell as well. I'm gonna make it, this would be a brown text cell. Going to be currency and then the per unit we're going to take the 25 million divide it by the 200 units and then the price per square foot we'll take the 25 million and divide by the 175,000. and then we have our debt assumptions next for our debt inputs we need a few different things
I'm going to indent these labels so it's clear that it's falling under the debt section. In this particular example, we're saying we, we have a bank loan, but if you have agency, bridge debt, you could, you could type in the loan type here. These will also all be brown text cells. The LTV is going to be 65%. The interest rate 5.75%. Amortization was 25 years. And then the loan cost was 1%. I'm going to add some decimals there. And we'll wrap up this section with loan cost, loan amount, annual payment, and the total equity required. I'm going to do a quick spell check. I make a ton of spelling errors. I'm always more focused on the numbers. Uh, I'm going to also indent these cells so it's clear that they fall under the debt category. And then I'm going to just highlight this green so it stands out and also the price. That's obviously a very essential input in this particular model. So with the loan cost, we're going to just take 1% times the amount of the loan, which we don't have a loan amount yet. The loan amount is going to be the 65% LTV times the price. And now the loan cost populates, although I don't like the format. So I'm going to change that. And then the annual payment, we'll do a payment function. We'd be making monthly payments. We'll take the interest rate divided by 12. The amortizations multiplied by 12. The current present value is C13. And then we'll leave the future value argument blank. So the 102,000 is the monthly payment. So the last step, we need to multiply that by 12. And then I remove the decimal places to make it cleaner. The final calculation we need to make is total equity required. I'm going to leave this cell blank for now as we need to populate other sections of our model before we can make this calculation. Now let's create a CapEx section. If we recall, we were estimating that there would be approximately $310,000 in CapEx needs. So I'm just going to start adding some of those capital items we envision spending money on, working capital, common area carpet, common area paint, and some signage. We've entered in four different items so far, but there may be more. We'll make it big enough to host 10 different capital repairs if, if need be, hopefully not. And I'm going to reformat. These are all brown text cells because you can label this section however you like. Of the $310,000 we're estimating for capital, we'll say there's $1,000 per unit in working capital, $65,000 in common area carpet, $35,000 in common area paint, and $10,000 in signage. I'm going to steal the currency format. I'm going to make it a brown text cell. I'm going to steal the format from the rentable square footage for the remaining entries and highlight that all the way through item 10. And it would be nice to have a total calculation. So total CapEx. And we'll sum everything above. We label this section as CapEx. And I'll make the total row a dull gray And that section is complete. Now that we've finished the CapEx section, we can come back to the total equity required. Right now, the model assumes, because we're running an LTV scenario, that the bank would cover 65% of the purchase price and loan proceeds, but you'd be on the hook for funding the CapEx. So this calculation for total equity required is going to be the purchase price minus the loan amount plus the loan cost plus the total capex. But what if you received a loan quote that was LTC or loan to cost, meaning that not only would the bank fund the purchase of the asset, but they would also fund some of that capital expense. Let's set this model up so it could handle both scenarios. Right now, it can only do 
a loan to value financing quote. So let's go back to the loan amount formula and adjust it to be able to handle LTC. So we're gonna put an if formula in here. If this, if B8, what currently says LTV equals LTV, then we'll just take 65% times 25 million. But if it doesn't, meaning if it says LTC instead, then it's going to take 65% times the purchase price plus the capex. And we'll close that bracket. If we change it to LTC, the loan amount jumps up to 16.45 million. Let's make this a brown tech cell. And let's do what's called a drop down. So we go to data, data validation, and we're gonna create a list that has two options. We're gonna type in LTV comma LTC. And now we can just swap between LTV and LTC. Now let's move on to operations. For revenue, there's three columns. There's the revenue line item, the monthly per unit, and then the annual. I'm gonna widen the annual column. And then there's a couple different things that we will be tracking. So average rent on a monthly basis, this column a little wider, rent premium, parking, other, these would be brown tech cells as you're invited, as, as you're likely going to need to tweak these labels. From the deal details earlier, we know the average rent is currently $1,100. Let's say we did a very thorough rent comp analysis and we think there's potential for a $125 rent premium above where the rents currently sit. And for our parking assumption, we'll say that there's 200 units that we could charge $40 for, and then we're gonna divide that by the, the, the total amount of units at the prop, property. And then other, we'll just assume that we estimate about $50 per unit annually in other income items. These are going to be brown tech cells. I'm going to do the first one as a currency and then the rest as numbers. The current vacancy at the property is 6%. And we think 5.5% is a reasonable assumption once our ownership team takes over. So I'm gonna type in 5.5%. And then I'll format this cell. I'm gonna do a custom format where it's 0.00% and then I want it to say vacancy. Make it, again, make it a brown text cell. The text reads as 5.50% vacancy, but when we click in the formula bar, it shows up as just being 5.5%. That's exactly what we want because then we can just take all of the data from above and multiply it by a negative 5.5% vacancy. I'm just gonna make this cell red so it pops as being negative. And then we can take all of our assumptions multiply them by the number of units in the complex, 200, and then again by 12 to get the total annual revenue cash flow. Turn this cell red again so it stands out. And I'm gonna steal this format from the CapEx section and we'll do an auto sum. And then the one small adjustment we need to make is multiply this value by 12. So while the data through rent and the vacancy is the monthly per unit, this value here is the annual per unit. In other words, we're projecting that each one of the 200 units in the complex would generate nearly $15,000 of revenue per year. And now let's move on to expenses.
For expenses, we're gonna make these assumptions on an annual per unit basis, and then our model will annualize that for us. I'm going to copy and paste the expense labels. And then I'm gonna take the Format Painter and, and take the format from the labels above. I'm gonna turn the property taxes to black tax. We'll eventually input a separate section from property taxes that will flow into this part of the model. And then for management fee, I'm basically going to do the same formatting trick as we did with vacancy where we'll do a custom format. It's gonna be 0.00% and management fee. And then we can begin making our assumptions. So I have some numbers here ready to go. We're going to say that admin would be $175 per unit. I'm going to link to the 200 units. Just to, re just to show you again, I'm gonna link up here and lock the cell. And I'm gonna go ahead and just drag all of these formulas down. Management fees a little different we enter in the assumption to the left, the 4%, so then we take 4% times the annual per unit that's totaled in this gray row. Finish. Lose the decimal places, and then the model will mul multiply by 12 for us. And then let's finish with our other assumptions until we get to property taxes. And then there's some expense line items for other, there are some expense lines for other items. We're gonna plug in zeros for now and then reserves, we're gonna be conservative and go with $300 per unit. Steal this format once again. And then we just need to sum these two columns. It's not fully accurate yet because we're still waiting to input our property tax assumptions, but Let's go ahead and calculate an expense ratio. And that's going to be total expenses divided by total revenue. Make that a percentage. And now we can calculate an NOI. So I'm going to just take the format, I'm gonna delete the the middle column data, that, that doesn't matter. I'm gonna take the total revenue minus the total expense. Make that black text. And then a few rows below, we'll grab the mortgage payment data. Which is equal to the one point 226 million that we calculate in the capital stack section of the model. And then let's also calculate a debt service coverage ratio, which is the NOI divided by the debt service. We'll lose some of those decimal places and I actually need to relabel that this row is as NOI. And then finally, the cash flow after debt service, which would be the NOI minus the mortgage payment. And I'll make the mortgage payment red because it's a cash outflow. And I'm going to highlight this row green so it stands out. And this is not capital stack information, it is our operations. And just because I'm anal, I will extend the formatting out through column D. And I don't like this decimal place here either. And now I just want to make a few quick adjustments to the formatting and get everything to be perfect. And now let's move on to property taxes. So I will take the header from CapEx. Let's 
label it right away this time. And then there's a few different things that we need to input in this section. So if the current taxes, there's, there's information online, we already pulled it. Saying the current assessment is 23,567,000. The taxes payable today were 465,000. I like to calculate those property taxes on a per unit basis. So we're going to take that and divide it by 200 units, which is 2,325 per unit in property taxes. And then the applicable tax rate is the tax today divided by the assessment, which equals 1.97%. The assessment today and the taxes payable today are manual inputs. Well, the taxes per unit and the tax rate would be calculations. The final assumption we need to make in this section is what property taxes will reassess to. In other words, if the property sells above where the current assessment levels are today, will the assessor take it all the way to the sale price? Will they come up a little short, a lot short? It really depends on the market you're working in. Just as a common rule of thumb, I've seen 85% to 100% being the most common. Since we're underwriting conservative at this juncture, let's just say they go to 100% of purchase price, we'll make that a brown text cell, as that is your decision. So then the future tax assessment would be the sales price times 100%. Your future property tax exposure would be 1.97 times 25 million. And then the future tax per unit is the future tax liability divided by 200 units, which is 2466. Now we can go to the property taxes line item in our operating assumptions and grab this stabilized taxes, future taxes per unit. Once we've plugged that in the 2466, the future annual tax liability also populates and now our expense section is complete. Our NOI is accurate, our DSCR is updated to reflect the property tax info, and then our cash flow is, is just shy of 500,000. And then the last piece is the return metrics. Before we start calculating cap rates, cash on cash return, yield on cost, let's just summarize the total cost basis. So we have a price, we have CapEx, we have loan cost, price 25 million, CapEx 310,000, the loan cost 162,500, and then the total cost basis, Hit a quick sum formula is 25.47 million. Now let's calculate a cap rate. Cap rate will be the NOI of 1.7 million divided by the purchase price. Make that. So this is the pro forma cap rate of 6.87%. The cash on cash return will take the cash flow after the mortgage payment and divide it by how much equity you have in the deal. And then finally, the yield on cost takes the project NOI divided by the total cost basis. These are very important metrics, so we'll highlight them green to stand out. The model we just completed is what Tactica offers its website visitors for free. But if you want to take this analysis just a little farther, there's a couple extra things we could do to help assess this investment opportunity. These are all pro forma metrics. This is what we're projecting to happen once we take over the project. But let's slide this down quickly. We have the current ownership's 2022 NOI. If we take that, it was approximately 1.3 million, and then we divide it by the purchase price, 
we have a historical cap rate. So I'm gonna say, make this a percentage, the 2022 cap rate. It's a good sign that our pro forma metrics, the cap rate, cash on cash, and yield on cost, are all higher than the 2022 cap rate. Another interesting exercise is, is looking at the current deal like this. We're buying this deal on the owner's financials at a five and a quarter cap. If we execute our business plan, hit an NOI of 1.7 million, and sell it back to the market at a 5.25 cap, we'd be in line to make a pretty significant profit. If we take the 1.7 pro forma NOI and divide it by the market cap rate, the 5.25%, assuming we execute our business plan, we can in theory sell it back to the market for about 32.7 million. Therefore, we have a profit potential of about 7.7 .7 million. Another quick tip involves the debt service coverage ratio. You notice it's it's quite a ways away from the debt information. So what you might consider doing is setting up some conditional formatting where you wanna highlight this cell if it's less than one, two. And we'll make it yellow with dark yellow text. A lot of lenders won't let debt coverage go below 1.2 or some more aggressive banks, I've heard it go as low as 1.15 or, or 1.1. But we, we want the model to alert you if you're being too aggressive with your debt assumption. So if we come up here and we jack up the LTV from 65% to 80%, now it drops below and it shines yellow to alert you, hey, you might need to tweak some assumptions because as the model currently sits, most lenders aren't gonna check off on a 1.14 debt service coverage ratio. With that, the model's complete. The brown tech cells are your playground. You can adjust your purchase price, your financing assumptions, your operating assumptions, your CapEx requirements, and see how it would affect your investment metrics. And that concludes the tutorial. We quickly built a one-page multifamily pro forma from scratch. It's meant to serve as the initial analysis tool when you're considering investment. You don't quite know if it's gonna pencil, if it's gonna make sense yet. Hopefully this helps you vet it and helps you determine if you should dive in deeper and take a, take a more thorough look at a potential investment opportunity. This is a template that I offer Tactica site visitors for free. There's a link below, you can download it there and it will be emailed to you in short order. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this tutorial. If you've been enjoying the Tactica content that we've been putting out, please give the video a like, subscribe, and allow us to notify you when we're releasing new prevalent commercial real estate content. Thank you so much for your time and we'll see you next video.